We're having uh, Trisha and Ang Shao to the stage as well. And uh, we have uh, space for some questions from the audience. We have our mic runner here. So it works uh, the way that you know by now. So wave your hand. And uh, we have one first here. And you're going to do it by example, stating your name and where you're from and your question. Hi, I'm Fabian Hemmert. My question is, so will they live happily ever after? <laughs> they don't have to, because the important part is that they live happily right now. OK. Oh. <laughs> and uh, what more questions do we have? That one answer just solves everything. OK, it solved everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, and uh, while, because one thing that you stated was Ang Shao, that this is a way of building courage. Maybe you can build into your courage of asking question. But I saw the link between building courage, building your identity, as you talked about Ang Shao, and this is also taking power to, power to the people picking up the use. So why, what does this development, if you could all comment on the link, say about the future of society or people? Who wants to feel that first? Because I mean, it's, this is something we talk about, right? Quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I can, I can take that first. Um, I, you know, I think you know, we live in this, me at least you know, um, in, in 21st century, we live in a media-saturated environment, especially 20th century saw the, the rise of broadcast and all kinds of media telling a story from a, from a very centralized point of view. And, um, but you know, what, what I'm finding in, all, in so, many of my re so much of my research of how people are manipulating and changing media is that um, you know, the way we, we play with media for fun um, can also be a way to play with media that retells a story for ourselves, tells our own story, creates a new narrative, and um, it's an individual story. It's it's uh, it's not like we're, we're able to broadcast this to everybody, but I think there's 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 something really unique and compelling about re being able to reframe a narrative and create the story that you want to see in the world and um, use that as a vision for um, for a possible future. Well, and also like you're seeing that what what I think speaks to the power of a lot of this emotional expression is that it's people who may not necessarily speak the same language. It's yeah. like users in China are also taking images from mean girls and like they don't totally, they've never been to America, but they'll be able to use that moment of ex emotional expression that's captured and they not, they, their culture may not like have, you know, taught them how to emotionally express their sadness, but they're able to start doing that through these kind of gifts. So it's a very, you know, global kind of culture that, and it's, and we talk about pop culture always as like a negative thing, but the way I see it is in many places, pop culture is this vehicle for emotional expression. Absolutely. So do we understand it for, uh, I've been working with performative art or contemporary art, and then you can, if it's not verbal, you can actually tour the world with it because you usually address issues that are universally human. And is it the same yeah. here? Will I understand it where I come to? Wherever I come to. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The the uh, uh, so I've studied the meme sort of space for uh, quite a bit, and um, uh, two things I, I, I saw that were really inter interesting were that was first that uh, you had things like image macros that were sort of spreading beyond the languages that were sort of um, uh, displayed on on the image, and that's because. Uh, uh, it's the it's that visual portion, right? It's the it's the expression of someone's face, it's it's, it's of a reaction face, whatever it is, that that people latch onto, um, and they understand that because that's what's important is understanding the emotion more than the exact uh, uh, thing that you're upset about or happy about, what have you. Uh, but the other thing that's happened is because of the rise of gifts, uh, but that actually I should say um, spread in Western countries and um, and Spanish-speaking countries and uh, Japan and Korea. Uh, but I didn't see a lot of penetration into China uh, or into Africa, right? And, and uh, for various reasons, uh, most of which Anshal has already written about, and you should definitely go check her stuff out. Um, but the other thing that happens is that uh, there's, enough, uh, there's enough acknowledgement of what that is and what that means that the, those spaces have created their own uh, memes and their own formats uh, that make sense for them. And um, I, I'm wondering this, if a lot of that stuff is going to sort of come back over to the West. And it has in some points. What, what was the one we were talking about the other day? Well, there's a lot of memes you're seeing from like China, the romantic youth, um, ideal youth meme, where young people in China were posing 
different pictures and like three different stages of their life being like, you know, regular and then like stupid and emotional. But, and it really, you know, confronted the whole stereotype of like youth in China being like really emotionally restrictive and they didn't have multiple identities. And then you see it being replicated in the US and what was that? Or in, in the West in general, right? In, in mostly uh, in US and Europe. Uh, and actually, no, actually also Spanish speaking countries, which is the, um, uh, uh, what blank thinks I'm like. What the what the what uh, you know what my parents think I do what I actually do what you know that sort of thing, yeah. um, which actually started off from a Chinese uh, had a Chinese precedent which was awesome. Yeah, and that's a lot of the stuff that Ansha is documenting is like looking at the spread of memes and so much of this has been going eastward or you know yeah. west from outward, but I think we're going to see it originate we'll see, here. Yeah, we'll see the, the other way. direction. And another um, one from um, from Africa that I was looking at was a, a tweet like a foreign journalist uh, coming out of <laughs> from Kenya, um, and they're poking poking at uh, journalist per perceptions of um, the elections in Kenya. And another meme that was sub meme of that was someone tell CNN um, because it, it was specifically about CNN's depiction of the elections. Mm. And, um, and then I've seen uh, then then the turkey me the, the the penguin memes uh, from CNN Turkey. Um, you had um, 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 there are all kinds of like CNN memes that have been popping up. That I've seen since then. Um, and so you see much more, um, a lot of dialogue going um, in, in other directions, not just coming from the West. Mm. Mm. And before, oh, there's one, yeah, you can ask a question. Hey guys. Um, it's hey Kate. Hi. Hi. Um, so Ancho, I love how you said that memes give voice to the voiceless. Um, have you seen any, seen any examples where the voiced have been trying to use this, use this for their own political ends? So like the hegemony and oh, power yeah. holders yeah. using these techniques to try and maintain their, their grasp? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, the, the same memes that can um, be used to poke fun at a dictator, um, as we saw yesterday, can also be used to poke fun at marginalized individuals. The same, this is cultural artifacts, these practices have, you know, can, can be used in many ways. Um, and, you know, what, what, we're, what I'm trying to do with showing this is, is to complexify the debate, is that, um, you know, the, we, when we look at memes, um, some people call them silly, some people call them awesome and fun, some people call them dangerous and, um, and harassing, and, and those are all valid perspectives. Um, but I've also seen a lot of evidence of how this can bring um, amazing voice and power to people who've not had a voice before. And so, um, so absolutely, there is that. There is a there is the opportunity to use these memes to reinforce uh, structural power dynamics, uh, cultural di uh, structural cultural dynamics, things like that. Um, but at the same point, um, they give voice um, to so many contexts that it's it's difficult to deny that they have extreme power for um, for those who are the most powerless. Thank you. And uh, we actually have that, I must have that as the last question. And uh, before we, uh, thank you. I think with um, the connection to the discussion we had uh, yesterday about online harassment, where the power, which you connected to, the power behind all these actions and expressions are us as human yes. beings. So that's where we always get back to what we do with our freedom of responsibility and expression. and. Thank you very much for Thank taking you. all of us into what it Thank actually you. means. And let's all give a big hand to our speaker. Yeah. Thank you guys too. <laughs>